You are listening to the PRO Media Network, the next level in entertainment. and 27 Memphis Grizzlies, by the way. Before we get into the particulars, we'd like to give you a round of applause for joining us. That's right, this applause is for you. Thank you for joining us, of course. We always, we always appreciate it. And uh, to our supporters as well, and those people who do donate to help improve or build our platform by simply going to www.patreon.com slash the P-R-O media network and donate a dollar, donate whatever you can give uh, to help empower the broadcast. And going into today's show, we'll be recapping the Pelicans 102 to 105 loss to the 13 and 27 Memphis Grizzlies who are 8 and 13 at home. And I say all those statistics for a reason. On the previous uh, podcast, if you remember, when we previewed this game, I said that I was going to go in the opposite direction with the Pelicans. I call it the Pelican two-step. I've also made quite uh, the reference about calling the New Orleans Pelicans the kings of Midgard. As you hear the thunder striking behind you, that's synonymous with Thor's hammer. He <laughs> uh I meant it as a as a joke, but when I was looking at uh, one of the Thor movies, I don't remember which one that just caught me, you know, by, uh, you know, in my mind to say, hey, man, that's the Pelicans right there. The Pelicans are the kings of Midgard, They're the Midland kings. Uh, they can't seem to get above and away from 500, which once again, they're 20 and 20 now after losing a very winnable game against a, a against an opponent. I'm not saying that Memphis isn't a team that's capable of putting ga- wins together. But this is the second game that they've lost to the Grizzlies. They lost 103 to 91 in the first contest. Then they lose 105 to 102. Now they got two games left against this team. And it's my opinion that without Mike Connolly, of course, Mike Connolly, I think he played in that first game. He didn't play in this game. There was no reason why the Pelicans, I don't care if Anthony Davis didn't play this game. They had enough firepower to be able to beat a struggling Memphis Grizzly team who are not good at home, who's who are eight and 13 at home. No, nevertheless, the Pelicans find a way to lose this game. And before I get into the particulars of it, here's coach L Gentry to tell you exactly what happened. Finish this game, but there's other aspects too. Where do you, where do you start to look at tonight's loss? Oh, I, I mean, I thought obviously we struggled in the third quarter. We couldn't make a shot, but I thought our defense was great in the third quarter. But you know, you give up 17 points and score nine. You know, that's that's that was that was the major problem in the second half. I thought, but then we fought back and uh, had good ball movement, and obviously Demarcus made some big shots for us. And uh, you know, it came down to a couple of possessions at the end of the game, and uh, they came up with an offensive rebound. They made a big three-point shot, and we didn't. That's really the difference in the game. Coach, you started the night with 38 points in the first up double figures. What changed in that in that moment in time? Well, we had shot the ball well, and they missed some easy shots also. And, uh, uh, you know, obviously, you know, we started to struggle a little bit offensively. They not really so much making shots as uh, – the offensive rebounds, I thought, hurt us as much as anything. I, I still thought our defense was very solid, but uh, we didn't we didn't guard like we did in the first quarter there. And uh, you know, eventually they chipped away at the at, at the league. 
when when you mentioned the, the offensive rebounds that they got, was there? What do you attribute that to? Is it just like? Well, they just beat us to the ball. Yeah. You know, they beat us to the ball. We got to be a little uh, more physical. You know, I thought the physicality of the game was really in their favor, and. Uh, you know, and then we just got to complete defensive uh, possessions by coming up with the rebound, not giving up offensive rebounds, and then going through another 24 seconds of defense. On the last play, I mean, feel like Drew did a really good job of, of setting up each one with a good look. It was just one of those things where just go down. Yeah, no, I mean, it's a great shot. We're not going to yeah. get a better shot than that. And, you know, it's with the guy that was leading the NBA in three point shooting. So, you know, that's about uh, the best we can get. But, you know, we there's there's a few possessions uh, before that that we've just got to do you know do better in. You know, we had a couple of uh, breakdowns defensively, and you know they end up with a uh, open jump shot and then a and then a three point shot. But you know, I thought we played hard. I thought we competed like crazy. You know, we just got to uh, we got to find a way to you know the, like I said, we you got to complete the possession by coming up with the basketball. Coach, normally the paint has been a strong weapon for you guys. You guys have been very effective scoring in. In, in the lane tonight, not so much. What well, was, not against this team. Yeah. No, no one scores. I mean, uh, they they're very good as far as paint points uh, in, in the whole league. And so, what we have to do is that you have to almost take what the defense give you, and that's j dribble penetration. But then you got to be able to kick the ball back out, and you got to make some shots. I thought we did that, you know, in order to get back in the game. You know, they they're collapsing defense and they take away drives. But if you move the basketball, uh, you're going to get open shots, and we did that. You know, to get back in the game, we were down double figures. Also, we got back in the game by doing exactly that, and you got to complete that by, you know, doing it in the last couple of possessions of the game and being able to knock down the shot. That's Coach L. Gentry breaking down uh, why he felt that the team lost the game. They didn't, and I have to agree. The Etwan Moss shot, he got a very decent look at it, but that would have just been for the tie. When you go over the statistics and look at the game you understand uh, why the Pelicans will beat this game. They were just out physical in this game. You look at what the Grizzlies did. They, they out-rebounded the Pelicans 61-50. to 50. They brutalized them in the points of paint battle. 50-30, to 30, they beat them 20 points in the paint. 20 points. They also, even though I got to give the Pelicans credit, they didn't turn the ball over that much like they usually would do, which they just gave up 12 turnovers for six turnovers. I mean, 12 turnovers for six points. How do you still lose? Well, let's look at the statistics of the matter. They shot 44%, 2% better than what the Memphis Grizzlies shot. They hit six more three-pointers than the Memphis Grizzlies hit. And then if you look at one of the most telling stats of the game that you can really pinpoint down to, and you don't have to get all intricate into the bench scoring and all this other nonsense. Only thing you have to do is take a look at the free throws, which comes down to this. The Pelican shot basically 67% from the free throw line tonight. They got to the line 34 times in this game, 34, and only converted 23 of them. I say that to say they lost the game by five points. So they had, they, they left nine points. Hey, excuse me. It, it, if, you know, they lost, they left 11 points at the free throw line. Now, the Memphis Grizzlies went to the free throw line 32 times. They were 26 out of 32 for 81%. You see what I'm getting right here? This is what I'm talking about. When you get to the free throw line, it's called the free throw line for a reason. It's supposed to be the easiest, simplest shot that you get. Nobody's putting a hand in front of you. Nobody's standing in front of you when you at the, three, the free throw line. All it is is that you hit the damn shot. In bottom line, the easiest, basically the easiest shot in the game, a free throw. Pelicans didn't do it. They left 11 points on the floor. They lose by three. Then we talk about possessions here, possessions there. What I've seen from the Pelicans defense, not that much. The Memphis Grizzlies don't average 105 points a game, folks. They don't. They average far, They average less than that. But it always appears to me that when the Pelicans play teams that are teams that average, like when they play Dallas, Dallas didn't average that many points. They didn't score as many points. They're not known to score as many points that, you know, like they scored against us to get that win. It's just the same thing over and over again is what I'm saying. A good, good teams take care of the ball. 
good teams, when they get to the free throw line, they take advantage of the free throw line. There's no reason why they shouldn't be hitting, hitting a higher percentage from the free throw line. They left 11 points just at the free throw line. I don't need to talk about missing three pointers or how, how uh, bad Drew Holiday looked or whomever. The reality of the situation at the end of the game is that you failed to convert on the simplest shots, or which is a free throw, at the free throw line, which ultimately cost you the game. I don't have to get into the nine point three point, the nine point quarter that they posted when they only scored nine points in the third. And then try to hurry up back to try to win the game in the last minutes. It's just it's just bad basketball, man. It's when it comes down to and it's consistently bad basketball. And I call it the Pelican two step because they win one, they lose one. They win one, they lose one. They win one, they lose one. My prediction from the last game was that they will lose because they won the previous game. So it stands. So what am I thinking they're going to do against Portland? They should beat Portland now. That's my that's that's my prediction. I'm going to stick to it. They'll beat Portland. We'll preview that later on. But let's listen to Demarcus Cousins and see what he said. Now, uh, Cousins, Big Cuz, he scored. He he came into this game. He led this team. He played hard against a very hard opponent. Paul, uh, 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 Mark Gasol is not a punk. You know, he played. Mark Gasol is a very difficult guy to play against. Gasol himself had 21 points, 10 rebounds, and seven assists. He almost had a triple double. Demarcus Cousins banged with him for 40 minutes. He put up 29 points, eight rebounds. Let's hear what Demarcus Cousins got to say. You know, I basically had some open shots and I took them and they failed. Um, kind of just found the shots in the floor of the game. Um, nothing special, just found the shots in the floor of the game. In that third quarter in particular, what kind of just went off track with all this? It was. It was. Bad quarter. All around. It's a terrible quarter. You feel like you guys are just going through a little bit of something that happens in basketball where you just have shooting lulls. You know what I mean? Like some of the shots are open, just not going in. Um. Yeah. I mean, you can't make every shot, and uh, some nights it seems like you can't miss. But uh, it's just an up and down night. That's Demarcus Cousins. It was a short interview, not that much, but uh, the funny thing that I noticed. Um, about this game, you know, to give you some stats and facts on it coming into the game. Memphis outscored New Orleans 50 to 30 in the paint, like I said. Memphis grabbed 14 of the 50 rebounds on the offensive glass, which the Pelicans are one of the worst teams in the NBA in offensive rebounds. Now, what that means is they don't get second chance opportunities. So if they don't hit the initial shot, chances are, they're not gonna get. They're not gonna get the extra points needed to win games. And a lot of teams who are good on the offensive end get second chance points that way, a second chance to score at the basket. The Pelicans do not. So it's the pressure to score the first time down. And the the scheme, the scheme, whatever they're running is, the guy gets one shot. They break back toward the other end to try to play defense. And most of the times, allow a walk up layups or wide open shots. So why are you rushing them back there if they're not going if they get back and the defense is bad anyway? I just don't understand that. Uh the Grizzlies out rebounded Pelicans by a margin of 10. And who really killed them this game was former Pelican Tyreek Evans, who scored a, a team high 28 points on 10 or 24 shooting. The game had 11 lead changes, of course, and 11 ties. So they went back to back. Trailing 40 to 29 early in the second quarter. Memphis went on a 15 to 4, 4 run in the game with 44 uh at 44 with seven minutes and 20 seconds remaining in the first half. Trailing 63 to 30, 30, uh 63 to 60 early in the third, the Grizzlies mounted another run. This time going a 13 to 2 swing that took the lead to 75, uh, excuse me, 73 to 65 with six minutes and fifty-two seconds remaining. In that particular time frame, trailing 84 to 73 with 858 remaining in the fourth quarter, New Orleans went on a 16 to 5 run to tie the game at 89 with five minutes remaining. Then Cousins connected with two three pointers and scored 14 in the time and at time and that final frame of time. After the tie at 89, the game featured seven lead changes 
or two more ties. The Grizzlies took the lead with two minutes left at 95-95 on the Mark Gasol hook shot and held the vantage for the rest of the game. New Orleans cut the lead to one point on three more occasions and missed a three-point shot that would have sent the game into overtime. Bottom line is the Pelicans continue to underachieve against opponents that's far, I ain't gonna say far, but they're more talented and a better team than the people, these type of teams like the the, the uh, teams that they're losing to, these Memphis teams who are struggling. Memphis is pretty much, they're not a good team right now. Pelicans show that they are. They get a win. They sneak a win uh, on the Pels, the Kings of Midgard. Anyway, we're about to go into our break. When we come back, we'll continue breaking down this game. We'll preview the next, and we'll give you some more interviews. All on the other side of the break, you're listening to the Pelican Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network. Get all the latest news and updates from your New Orleans Pelicans at the Pelicans Review, the new and official Pelicans Daily Journal, covering everything Pelicans. Attention, everyone. Get, get breakdown on games, free agent signings, and potential moves. Unbiased opinions and straight up facts with statistical analysis from G. Bell. Go to www.thesportsdaily.com forward slash Pelicans dash I dash View. I'm a Saints and Pelicans fan, so the only podcast I can get my fix is The Sports Coma with Big Q. The guy's intense, funny, and they always keep it real. Check out The Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. What's up, sports world? This Big Q from The Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. Talking to you about the website, theposhlifestyle.com. That's right, poshlifestyle.com. A great website where you can get great products at great prices. They sell organic herbs, vitamins, supplements, water filters for your home, EMF and cell phone radiation protection, healing magnetics and healing crystals, personal protection devices like cell phones, stun guns, and mace spray, organic deodorants, shampoos, soaps, toothpaste, and more. They also sell 10A grade Brazilian hair. 10A music is available now. All kind of the latest downloadable mixtapes. So what are you waiting for? Head on over to theposhlifestyle.com. That's the posh lifestyle. Life spell with a Y. L Y F E style.com. Put in the sports coma for the 10% discount on your purchase. It's a win-win. So get your mind and body right with the posh lifestyle. Get ESPN or Fox. Get straight sports talk from the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. You're listening to the Pelicans Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network for all things Pelicans. Welcome back to the Pelican Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network. We're recapping the Pelicans. Lost to the Memphis Grizzlies here. Played a few interviews in the first segment. This segment will continue. We'll hit you with an e- Etwan Moore uh, interview in a few minutes. Um, going into the rest of the statistics on this game, this loss. DeMarcus Cousins, like I said, he finished the game with 29 points, 8 rebounds in a losing effort. His supporting cast, Etwan Moore, 35 minutes in the game. He scored 16 points. Uh, two for seven from downtown, but he had 16. Rajon Rondo continued to uh, be more assertive on the offensive end. He had 14 points. Not so much on the assists, only three assists tonight. Didn't facilitate the ball like he usually was. He was trying to help out on the scoring end. And then we have the $100 million man, uh, Drew Holiday, who struggled mightily again. Five of 12 uh, from the field. 0 for four from downtown. 12 points on the night for him. And then 10 off the bench. In it from Ian Clark, who was four of nine, uh, 0 for three from downtown as well. And then New Pelican, DeAndre Loggins, another former Kentucky Wildcat teammate of uh, Kentucky Wildcat college teammate of De- uh, De- uh, Darius Miller and uh, DeMarcus Cousins, joined the team uh, for his first game. He played 11 minutes. He had four points. Now, a little some short information on Liggins. He was a second-round draft pick for the uh, Orlando Magic back in 2011. Uh, He's a guy that I think should help the Pelicans because if you look at a lot of the Pelicans guards outside of Drew Holiday, who's really a point playing a combo guard, he's 6'4". 
All the rest of those guards are pretty small. Etwine Moore is 6'3". Uh, Ian Clark is 6'3". You have a small guards. It's good to see that the Pelicans addressed it by going after a big guard. The guy is 6'6". Plus, he can guard the small forward position. He was uh, he shot. He was two of three. He had four points in limited in eleven minutes. So it's good to see that they're getting big guards to guard some of those bigger wings. And uh, I hope hope he signed a ten day contract. So we hope this guy sticks around and pick up some more minutes. Uh, Darius Miller, uh, twenty seven minutes, played a lot of minutes, was in effect of five points, ten of seven from the field, one of six from downtown. I can't hang this uh, just to say okay, one guy didn't do particularly well. We got to say. Uh, that if it wasn't for, I mean, just be honest, if it wasn't for the fact that they just not, they just didn't hit the free throws when it mattered. I mean, you got to be able to hit those free throws at a higher clip. If you did, if, imagine if they did hit four free throws here, it could have been a different outcome. If they'd have cut the, if they didn't leave uh, 11 points on the court, they wouldn't have to struggle around to shoot the a last minute shot just to go into regulation. I mean, they just to, to go into overtime. Uh, it's just uh, one of those things. But let's look at uh, let's listen to what Ian, Ian Etwan Moore has to say after the Memphis Grizzly loss. Um, nah, it was just us. We didn't uh, execute, you know, play with pace like we should have. And just didn't play with them. Is this one of those that uh, huh? kind of stays with you a little bit just because where you guys are in the standings and a team that struggled? Nah, I just go out there and play, man. I don't get up, get high, get low. Just keep going, do the job every day, and that's it. You, you, even though I know you talked about like that, you didn't like the execution of the third quarter for your team. I mean, you still feel like that was just a really rare stretch where you guys uh, missed open shots, like something that we haven't seen to that extent. Yeah, open shots, and uh, we got to do a greater job, better job. I mean. I mean, it wasn't wide open shots, though. I mean, we got to create better shots, and I'm saying maybe we hit more, uh, but that was it. It seems like the, the offense has slowed down a little bit lately. Is that something that's concerning you a little bit at all? Um, mm, nah, I don't know. I got to watch the film. I got to go um, think about it. I don't even know, honestly. The last play of the game, I mean, do you feel like it was just – Drew did a good job of seeing you and finding you. It was just a matter of, you, you know, obviously just didn't go in. But coach was saying, like, that was the guy that you, you want with the ball. You're leading the NBA in three-point shooting or close to it. Basically. Yeah, yeah. I mean, hey, open shot anytime you get a shot at the rim, you know, three. You know, you got to live with it. That one ain't go in, shit. But you got to go to the next one. That's all. Did you, did you think it was good to let your hand? Uh, yeah, of course. Yeah. But it ain't go in, but it's all right. We go. Got another game. Got to go to that. Go to that one. Each one more. Saying that you got to keep your head up and keep playing, and I think that's one of the things that you got to that that most players they have to do at this point. See, I think they got to keep their heads up and playing. You know how incredibly frustrating it is to to be this terribly inconsistent. I mean, with all the talent that you have on this team, you got Anthony Davis, Demarcus Cousins. Uh, Rajon Rondo, who's the great fa- uh, facilitator of the ball. You got a very good three-point shooter in Etwine Moy uh, there. You got a combo guard with his defensive prowess, not so much on the offensive end. He'll give you that every now and again, but better defensively than he is offensively, Drew Holiday. Those are four pretty decent players there. I mean, two of which are top, the, the best at their position which is Davis and Cousins, and one of which the combo guard Holiday is preferably probably in the top 10 or 15 in the league at his prospective position. So you got, you have guys, plural, on this team that can really carry this team to the higher heights. Why isn't it not meshing? And that's the question. What's wrong with this team and why are they underachieving? Is it the coach? Is it the players? Is it a combination of both? Some people say, well, it's a combination of both because of the, play- the coach could tell the players what to do if they don't listen or they don't execute properly. It can ultimately fall back on the coaching staff. The coach has to be able to get this team ready to play. Uh, I've been following the Pelicans for a very long time up into the back when they were the Hornets and following them through Monty Williams administration, through Byron Scott's administration, so on and so forth. I look at this team currently with, with – Elvin Gentry. And I got to go back to what I said some time ago about Coach Gentry is that I thought Coach Gentry, even though he brings the offensive edge where this team is scoring a crap load of points, they're one of the top five best teams in the NBA in terms of scoring 
uh, points per game, which currently they sit at a 110.6 exactly. But the issues I had with him was his defensive issues. So he brings Dave, Danny Ehrman from Boston to be the defensive coordinator. Well, it's not working. Ehrman, it's not working. They're averaging, they're averaging points per game, 110.6, and allowing opposition to score 110.8, which would make you 500. 11 out of the last 10 games, they're 5-5. Five and five. They win one, they lose one. In most of these games, you can attribute to the transition defense. And then there are other just terrible things, fundamentally speaking, like free throws, which is a big part of the, the a big part of winning in the NBA is if you convert a higher percentage of free throws, more than likely the close games like this game was, you end up win them, winning them because those points that you shot from the free throw line contribute to you keeping that lead. The Pelicans lost had left 11 points from the free throw line along on the court. And if they had most of that, it most it would have made a difference is all I'm saying. I don't even have to get into the transition defense or the fact that they're allowing wide open shots and uh, uh, the fact that they had letting them have walk up layups and all this kind of madness. I don't have to get into that or passing the ball to get better shots. There'll be some nights where you're just not going to hit the shot. You're just not going to do it. You're not going to be able to you're going to miss. But at the free throw line, that's something that we want to maintain. That is a free throw, meaning it'll be the easiest shot. Basically, it's free is what they're telling you in the term free. It's it's almost like they're giving it to you. Anyway, that's my philosophy on that. I'm saying is what's wrong with this team? Is it schematic? Is it the fact that the team is not buying into what they're saying? Well, obviously, to a degree, all those things have some degree of truth. Don't wouldn't you say? You look at a uh, L Gentry who had some nights, he just looked flim flam. He looked razzle dazzled. You know, uh, you got the th- you, you, the three guard rotation works, you know, since they installed each one more into the three guard position. I was hesitant to do that because if each one more is only six foot three, he would be forced to guard big guys who usually average size at that third guard position or that small forward position are six, 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 seven, six, eight. And he, most of the times he's six, three guarding a guy four inches taller than him. I was against that. So in to many degrees, you have Dante Cunningham who comes off the bench and Cunningham is a better defender than he is a offensive person. No doubt about it. But at the same time, the Pelicans continue on a defensive end to give up transition plays. And I just think it's whatever they're doing this two, three or zone type of thing. I'm looking at here. You know, I just think they need to abandon that as soon as possible and try something else. But they continue to march out the same stuff out there and they it's not working. It's not working. Switch up your defense, play more man to man, do something else, you know, but you have two of the best bigs in the league. There's no reason why and how that they should be getting easy walk up layups and wide open jump shots because of poor, poor communication. You can see guys that stand in there. That's running around and then you see guys move from one side of the court to the other side of the court, abandon their player. They just and then opposing team swings the ball to the opposite of the court. You got a wide open three point shot. It happens at least five times a night that I can count watching wide open shots and the poor broadcaster that I'm listening to. He says the same thing. He's like, well, there's the wide open shot and knocked it down. You can't give up those wide open shots. Of course you can't. You know, it's 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 just it's it's taboo. But this is the thing. The Pelicans are that team. They are that terribly inconsistent team that everybody said, well, it's not the fact that the Pelicans aren't talented. It's the fact that a lot of people just don't believe that L Gentry has the ability to take this team anywhere. And I and guess what? I'm one of those people. I don't think L Gentry has the ability to take this team to make them realize that maximum potential is what I'm saying. I'm saying he's not that coach. I would even say that better coaches that can pull out this younger team. He's an older coach. And I think that this team should have a younger coach with a more of a defensive prowess a more defensive mindset, because this team, if you look at them, even though they are a very good offensive team in many regards, they could be a very good defensive team with those two bigs operating down there. You know, and I just don't think that this current staff can take is can have the the that knows what they need to do to make the Pelicans realize take this team to a championship level. I just don't see that in L Gentry. 
I don't. When they hired them, I said the same thing. You look at the coaching records of everybody that was considered. He was by far the worst. He was the last on the totem pole, in my opinion, that you should look. You got Tom Thibodeau that was on there. You had uh, Je- uh, Stan- uh, Jeff Van Gundy that came in. Jeff Van Gundy, you know, who is a better, far better coach, head coach than Elvin Gentry, in my opinion. So it's Tom Thibodeau. And you say, well, how could you say that? Look at the records. Records mean something, y'all. And I think a lot of the stuff that's going on with this team is not just Poel Gentry over his head. It's as Dell Demps, you know, overpaying for players. And now you're sh- kind of stuck to some of these players. They need bench help as well. Many times the bench is being outscored. And, and that's something that's hurting the team as well, which is forcing the bigs to play more minutes to compensate. Now they are starting to play some of the bigs because Anthony Davis, that they're starting to play Sheik Diallo, but there'd be three and four to five games where they DMP Sheik Diallo or Amir Asik. They're just sitting there collecting the check for free. They're not doing, they're not, he, he, you're not playing them. They started to play them recently because they were forced to because of injuries, but it's still not adding up. So uh, let's preview this Portland game. Now, Portland, they'll meet up with Portland in the Smoothie King Center on the 12th at 7 o'clock uh, p.m. Central Time. And, the, and uh, to give you a little information on the game, we got a few minutes left in the podcast dealing with the, um, with the uh, excuse me, with the uh, Portland Trail Blazers, is that New Orleans snapped an 11-game losing streak in, in uh, the Rose City April of last year, the last Pelican went on the road against Portland uh, prior. Let me see here. I think it's the, they're here. Yes. Yes, they are in the, they're at home in the Smoothie King Center. So uh, they won the season open against Portland back in 2016 for the first time in a long time. The first meeting of the season, a Anthony Davis played only five minutes. Remember he got hurt in that game, left the game with an injury. In two games against Portland, DeMarcus Cousins has averaged 39, uh, 38 and a half points a game on 51% shooting and 10 and a half rebounds. Hopefully, he can keep that kind of stuff going. Drew Holiday is uh, averaging his average, which is 5, 15 and a half against this team as well. Former uh, uh, Elvin Gentry's record is 12 and 24 all time against Portland. Terry Scott's is 18 and 17 all time against New Orleans. Uh, there's a lot of comparisons uh, with this team, uh, but if you look at what the the Portland Trailblazers are, they're a pretty decent team. They're a pretty good team. Looking at them, they're 20, 22 and 19. Now they're struggling a little bit, but they're still good on the road. They're 12 and nine on the road. They average about 103.5 points a game and allow 102.4 a game. They shoot 45% from the field. They rebound about 44 and a half rebounds a game. They give up about 19 assists, dish out 19 assists a game. They have about five. They get five blocks and about seven steals a game. And in their last 10 games, they're six and four. Now, that, of course, this is a terribly difficult team because they use, they have that incredible backcourt of McCullough and Lillard. Those guys are just f- tremendous. This will be the third game between the teams. Of course, Trailblazers beat the Pelicans 103 to 93 in the first game, and the Pelicans return the favor uh, in uh, Portland 123 to 116. And they have two games left this game on the 12th, and then one in uh, March on the 27th, late in uh, March, uh, approaching the end of the season. Uh, excuse me, late in March, that is. <clears throat> and this game, New Orleans coming into this game averaging 110.6 a game while giving up 110.8. 49, shooting 49% from the field, rebounding about 42 and a half a game, assisting 26 and a half a game, blocking five a game, stealing seven a game, and currently on a, uh, they're five and five in the last 10 contests. Trailblazers coming off a, a loss to the Houston Rockets, 121 to 112. Prior to that, they were on a three game winning streak beating Atlanta, San Antonio, and OKC. Could you, that's, those, Atlanta's kind of a pushover, but San, beating San Antonio, OKC, uh, and OKC is playing pretty good now, is is is, is not a feature brush off. Of course, the Pelicans, kings of Midgard, 
They lost to the going back five contests. They lost to the Knicks, beat Utah, lost to Minnesota, beat Detroit, lost to Memphis. Now they will beat Portland again. Wouldn't you say I'm sticking with the Pelican two step? That's what I call the Pelican two step. Win one, lose one, win one, lose one. And I don't anticipate because I don't see, even though Anthony Davis supposed to lace him up right here. Uh, I, no doubt about it. I, they will beat Portland this game, and then whoever they play the next game, they'll end up losing. So that's obviously what they do. Also, another thing to talk about dealing with the Pels is the fact that when you open up this thing, I think what's really hurting this team that we, we talked about that on the defensive end. But you know, how do they change that? I don't think they know how to. If they did, they would have did. I don't understand why. You know, they're marching in this team out here. Now, now understand this, y'all. It's 82, uh, excuse me, 82 games in the regular season, correct? Well, so far, guess what? This game Friday will be uh, the 41st game of the season. So this team has been uh, has played 40 games. They're 20 and 20. They're 10 and 9 on home, at home, which is ridiculous to me. You can't win at home. You can't win on the road. You so their problems, not environmental, it's just internal and, sy- and systemic. It's a system problem uh, defensively. It's a system problem turnovers. It's a system problem and not being fundamentally sound. You start with the fundamentals. Going back to the free throw drills, going back to playing, uh, you know, you're good at the offensive end. Could we just like not do so many offensive plays? Can we just focus on playing defense? Could we just focus on that? Uh, primarily, hey, I don't see. I can see what Bill Fitch is, the Chris Fitch is doing on the offensive end. Is he's quote the offensive coordinator for this team? Defensively, I don't see what the hell Danny Irvin or Dave Irvin, whatever his name is, is doing. I don't see it. You get and you look at the statistics. They're giving up more points than they're scoring. You're going to lose games that way. Then you have teams that can't even score that many points that get those extra points because they get wide open shots and walk up layups against the Pelicans. Can't happen. And if anything, if you middle around at this point and you end up playing a team like Golden State or you happen to get to the club, you're going to meet a Houston or Golden State and they're going to run your butt right out of, the, out, out of there in the first round. So, I mean, I, I don't know. We just can keep monitoring the team. But my prediction for this game is that they win one, they lose one, they lost to Memphis. Hey, they're going to beat Portland. Watch it come true. Thank you for listening to the Pelican Post Game Report. I'm Big Q. Please go to our Patreon page and donate www.patreon.com slash the PRO Media Network to donate and support the show. Thank you for listening. Peace. Get ESPN or Fox. Get straight sports talk from the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. What's up, world? This is DC from the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. Have you ever been sitting in front of your computer screen, all in traffic, tired, lacking energy, feeling drained? Did you know there are electromagnetic fields or EMF waves all around you that cause this disease? Get it? This ease? Luckily here at Posh Lifestyle, you can get your EMF protection. They have pendants, the shell dye bricks, cubes, and pyramids. Check out the PoshLifestyle.com. That's life spelled with a Y. P-O-S-H-L-Y-F-E-S-T-Y-L-E.com for all your health needs. So get your mind and body right with a Posh Lifestyle. Clear, clean, great tasting filtered water. We're all thirsty for it. But in the U.S. alone, an estimated 2.5 million plastic bottles are added to the environment each year in search of the perfect drink of water. There has to be a better solution, and there is. Crystal Quest, a leader in the manufacturing of water filtration technology, has been providing clean, drinkable water for 20 years. With a deep commitment to providing the highest quality products and excellent customer service, Crystal Quest has been recognized by such leaders as Consumers Digest, Dr. Oz, and Colin Ingram's The Water Drinking Book. Providing cost-effective, reliable water filtration systems for residential, commercial, and industrial customers worldwide. Offering our customers the cleanest and most environmental-friendly drinking water at a rating of high purity. With Crystal Quest's water filtration technology, you can rest assured that your water will be crystal clear. 
Contact our network of authorized distributors and join our thousands of satisfied customers. Just log in to theposhlifestyle.com. Once again, that is theposhlifestyle.com. You're listening to the Pelicans Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network for all things Pelicans. In today's world, children are bombarded with negativity on television, online, and at school. Our kids need to have a positive outlook on life and the world around them. I want to share with you a valuable resource you can use to bring positivity into your child's life. It's the new book, 101 Powerful Children Affirmations, a guide to positive child self-image. From author and dad, G.J. Barabino. This is a simple guide loaded with wonderful and inspirational affirmations designed to uplift young people's spirits. This positive and powerful children affirmational is chock full and loaded with wonderful inspirational sayings that will lift your child's self-image to whole new levels through the awesome power of spoken word. 101 Powerful Children Affirmations, a guide to positive child self-image from author and dad, G.J. Barabino. Available on Amazon. Order a copy for yourself, your child's teachers, or anyone you know with children. 101 Powerful Children Affirmations, a guide to positive child self-image. Order your copy today.